I'm Pastor Mark Buto, and this is another Higher Things video short for Bible 101. Nobody likes the spoiled kid, and that's exactly what Joseph was. He was Jacob's favorite. Remember, he was born from Rachel, the wife that Jacob loved the best. Benjamin, his younger brother, was the baby and only reminded Jacob of his wife's death. So Joseph was his favorite. So as Joseph grew up, Jacob gave him what is called a coat of many colors, a very fine coat, a nice gift, which his brothers didn't get. And they didn't like him. And then Joseph began having dreams about sheaves bowing down to his sheave and so on. And the dreams seemed to indicate that not only his brothers, but his father too would be all bowing down to him someday. And that drove his brothers nuts. And they couldn't stand him and they wanted to get rid of Joseph. So they hatched a plan to kill their brother, but big brother Reuben said, no, no, let's not do that. So instead, the brothers took Joseph and they threw him down in a well. And when some traders came by, they sold Joseph to be a slave. Then they took his coat of many colors and they covered it with some blood from a goat or something. And they showed dad and said, look, dad, some wild beast has killed your son. And poor Jacob thought Joseph was dead. Meanwhile, Joseph gets dragged to Egypt and becomes a slave in the house of the captain of the guard, a guy named Potiphar. Now, Joseph is prospered by the Lord, and so everything he does kind of works out, and he's running the household, and everything that Potiphar has, he leaves in Joseph's hands, except his wife, of course, because it's his wife. But Mrs. Potiphar says, hey, Joseph, why don't you come lie with me? And Joseph says, no way I'm doing that. and going to sin against God. Well, she kept up hounding him, and finally one day, he's all alone with her, and she grabs him and says, let's go to bed. And he says, no way, and he runs, except he leaves behind uh, his cloak. Well, she shows that to Mr. Potiphar, and who do you think gets in trouble? Not Mrs. Potiphar, Joseph. And he winds up in the dungeons. Well, even in the dungeons, in prison, Joseph does all right. And the Lord blesses him and takes care of him. And he's pretty soon in charge of like the whole cell block, and he's running things. Well, along come the cupbearer and the baker of Pharaoh. And they have these, well, Pharaoh's mad at him, so he throws him in jail. And they have these weird dreams. And they say, we don't know what these dreams mean. And Joseph says, the Lord will tell me what your dreams mean. He says to the cupbearer, your dream means that in three days, you're going back to work for Pharaoh. You, Baker, however, in three days are going to be hanged. And that's exactly what happened. And when the cupbearer left, Joseph says, remember me when you're back in your position of, you know, authority and you got, a, got the ear of Pharaoh. But the cupbearer forgot and Joseph languished in prison another few years until the Pharaoh started having some really wild dreams. Big, fat ears of grain getting eaten up by scrawny, nasty-looking ears of grain. Big, fat, juicy cows being eaten up in his dream by scrawny, scraggly cows. He didn't know what it means, and Pharaoh's so troubled. And then the cupbearer says, oh, wait a second, I just remembered. There's a guy in prison that can tell you what your dreams mean. So the Pharaoh drags Joseph out and says, tell me my dreams. He's like, I don't know your dreams, but the Lord will tell me. And so Joseph interprets the dreams. He says, look, Pharaoh, there's going to be seven years where we'll have more food than we know what to do with. But after that's going to come seven years of famine where there won't be enough to eat. So store up the grain now, and then you have some left for when there's not enough to eat later. And Pharaoh says, boy, we should really find a guy to uh, be in charge of that project. How about you, Joseph? And so suddenly Joseph, who is hated by his brothers, ends up becoming like second in command of all of Egypt. Well, back in Canaan, the famine gets severe after a while. And Jacob says, you guys got to go down, sons, and buy some grain in Egypt. So they go down because Egypt's the only place that's selling food. And lo and behold, they've got to buy grain from Joseph. Well, long story short, you can read all this in the closing chapters of the book of Genesis. Joseph reveals himself to his brothers, and they are terrified because now they say, look at all the things we've done to him, and he's going to pay us back. And it would be a great, sweet revenge story, wouldn't it? Except that's not how Joseph operates because he knows that he's a sinner like his brothers are. And he says, look, you've done it for harm, but God meant it for good. So Joseph absolves them. He forgives them. And he sends them back to tell dad. Well, the famine gets really bad in the land of Canaan. There's just nothing to eat. So Pharaoh tells Joseph, hey, why don't you tell your dad and your brothers to come down here to Egypt? So eventually Jacob, with all of his sons, move down to Egypt. And there they live in the land of plenty and under the protection of Joseph. And then, well, after 400 years living in Egypt, but that's for next time. So let's take a look one more time at the family tree of Jacob to see all of his sons. 
So there's Jacob's sons from his two wives and their maidservants, the 12 sons of Jacob, the 12 tribes of Israel. They would be the fathers of the 12 tribes. And there they are, and they all moved down into Egypt. And when you've been in Egypt, Joseph had two sons of his own, Ephraim and Manasseh. And they had actually be numbered among the tribes because there were some different ways that they were numbered from time to time. For example, Levi and Joseph were actually left out, but then Ephraim and Manasseh were numbered, so it all works out to be 12. But anyway, there are the 12 tribes, the 12 of the Lord's people. And when they moved down to Egypt, Jacob with all his sons and grandsons, there were about 70 people or so, and they lived in peace and you know relative safety and happiness and quietness and prosperity. And like I said, about 400 years later, well, then we get to the book of Exodus, and that's for next time. So we see that even though the promise might have been in peril, what would happen to Judah? What would happen to Jacob's family? The Lord, through Joseph, took care of them and keeps that promise alive, keeps that bloodline alive, keeps that family alive by his grace. I'm Pastor Mark Buto, and this has been another Higher Things video short.